Sarah, have you seen the new collection from our sponsor, Vionic? It's called Vionic Vitals, and it offers some of Vionic's best essential styles for everyday wear to help you get ready for the spring, which is not that far off, by the way. The Willa Slip-On Flat is in the Vitals collection, and I have to say, I have a pair of Willas, and they are one of my favorites. This shoe has classic and classy loafer styling with a seriously supportive footbed, and they come in over 12 colors to complement any outfit. I've also got a pair of Vionic's Uptown Loafers on the way, which I'm really excited about because they collapse flat for packing. I'll definitely get a ton of use out of those when I'm traveling this spring. I know, and that feature is so smart. Well, Megan, I am also very excited about the Vionic Vitals collection. These are versatile daily wear styles that feel as good as they look. Yeah, and let's talk about that comfort, Sarah. Vionic actually got started by revolutionizing medical orthotics. Today, they continue to use that science to engineer shoes that are super cute and also feel great on your feet. Vionic even offers a 30-day guarantee. Wear your shoes, love them, or return for a full refund within 30 days. Use code THEMOMHOUR15 at checkout for 15% off your entire order at vionicshoes.com when you log into your account. That's one-time use only. Vionic Shoes, wearable well-being for your feet. Hi, I'm Megan. And I'm Sarah. We're two moms with eight kids between us, and we're the hosts of The Mom Hour. On this show, we're joined by a team of unique mom voices from across the country and in different stages of motherhood to bring you tips, ideas, and encouragement, and to help you feel a little less alone. We all know that motherhood is a lot easier when real moms share honest truths and remind each other that it's all going to be okay. We're not experts. We're parents who've been there. We're not perfect. We're real. Welcome to The Mom Hour. Hey, everyone, and welcome to episode 420 of The Mom Hour. I am Sarah Powers here with Megan Francis. Hey, Megan. Hey, Sarah. I'm pretty excited about this. Um, Sometimes our most fun and surprising episodes are about the very most mundane of motherhood tasks and adulting tasks. And today is very much in that category. We're talking about errands and running errands, which is like one of those things like laundry, like dishes, like, I don't know what it's else. It's a part of life, right? Everybody no does getting it. away from it. Right? Exactly. Everybody does it. I mean, the way in which it shows up in your life, I guess, could be different, but nearly everybody runs errands sometimes. And yet we don't really dig in and like analyze it or talk about it or even it's, it's kind of a solitary thing. We don't run errands yeah. in tandem with our friends. Um, so I'm excited to talk all about just our own, um, preferences and quirks about how we run errands. Of course, the phase of life that we're in right now, and maybe how that's a little bit different. Um, so I'm, I'm predicting that both of us will say something that will surprise the other because we've never talked about this. We haven't. And it comes up. It's kind of funny how often you and I are talking to each other while we're running errands Uh though, like we'll be boxing while we're doing something. And, um, I think this idea came about because I kept recording. It it just so happened that I kept passing through my little um, small town downtown at noon on like Tuesday, I think, or whatever, (laughs) whenever the siren, they test the sirens. And so twice I was at the exact same intersection, literally at noon when that siren went off and I stuck my phone out the window and like, while I was at the intersection, not while I was driving. Testing sirens is totally foreign to me. Even when I lived in Chicagoland, I was in the city. I don't ever, I've never lived somewhere where sirens go off. That's just different. So yes, to be honest, I'm not a hundred percent sure if it's a tornado siren here or if it's because we live right by a nuclear plant. Oh my, okay. Either or, you know, (laughs) whatever. Um, But you know, you mentioned something else that like we do these things in a solitary way, but do you remember the stage of life when you actually did run errands with friends? Oh, um, like college? I'm yeah, wondering. like college. Yeah. Okay. So I would have like walked into town from my college campus, which was right on the edge of town. And yeah, yeah gone to C- gone to CVS or Walgreens. It was a Walgreens there. Gone to Barnes and Noble. Um, maybe picked up dry cleaning. I mean, yes. we're, we're, I feel like I- that was definitely something you didn't do as as alone as we do as moms now. Yeah. Now it really is us or us and our kids. I also have a very clear memory of being a little kid with my mom running her errands and thinking it felt so grown up. Like it felt like the epitome of being a grown up is to have to like get in your car and go pay a bill because you used to have to do that in person sometimes (laughs) or 
um, drop off mail or whatever it was. I just that felt very almost glamorous to me Aww. as a little kid, which is kind of funny. I yeah. love that. I guess my equivalent of that would have been actually doing things on my own at, say, 16, 17, 18, when I was newly a licensed driver. I remember feeling how like how grown up I felt with like keys in my hand and a purse in my hand. Yeah. And so it's different. I wasn't tagging along with my mom. I was like out on my own. And I can't even think of what kind of errand I would have been doing, but it felt it felt light years away from my 15 year old self who would not have ever had an errand to run because I wasn't I didn't live in a walkable city where I could go right. walk an errand. I don't even think I had a purse till I was driving because I mean, until I was running errands, what did I need a purse for? Right, right. <laughs> yeah. The most the most momish thing. I yeah. will say I, I have had times where a friend has come to visit me from out of town, a close friend, you included, or like my high school bestie, Sarah, where I like have this secret wish that my close friend could see what my regular everyday life looks like. There's something very intimate about like having someone that you know and love, but then letting them like literally ride shotgun in a, a day in your normal life. Like you've come yeah. to visit me and we've picked up my kids from school, got to get ice cream. Like I really love that because there's something intimate about knowing how someone runs their errands or what, you know, what drive through line they sit through to get their coffee. I, I really love that. I love the details of everyday life. So I'm excited to talk about this. Me too. And I will also say um, that there was a phase in my life when I did kind of do that with both Jenna mm -hmm. and Katherine, where we basically would just pile whatever number of kids we had into a shared vehicle and like just do our days together. And there was something really lovely about that. Um, it wouldn't have worked for very long. Yeah. Like, there was a point where the kids were just too big or like we had too many disparate things that didn't have anything to do with each other. But there was a period of time when with both of them, we kind of did share our daily. And there's just something that does take the loneliness out of that. So yeah. I'm all about, you know, communal yes. and running. Let's yes. get back to it. Let's 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 make it a thing. I really yeah. think we should. Um, OK, so I guess broadly speaking, let's just both share how we currently feel about running errands. And when I was thinking about this, um, I remembered the episode we did not that long ago about like romanticizing your life and adding a little sparkle or reframing the everyday things you do um, to, to feel differently about them. I actually think errands is a great example of this. I personally find a lot of everyday romance in running errands at this stage of my life, which of course, for those who don't know, my children are 10, 13, 15 and in school every day. And I work from home and I have flexibility to run errands. Uh, like I have a lot of uh, personal agency about when and how I run errands. So not every stage of my life. Um, and it's not like I love every single type of errand, but in general, I actually really appreciate running errands. And I think for a couple of reasons, one, the pandemic made a huge shift. It, it was a huge yeah. dent in our, uh, our simple routines of like bopping around in a shopping center, pop in here, like mail a package here. It just changed everything so radically. And even when we were allowed to shop in person, don't you feel like Megan, the, the mental gymnastics required yeah. in like every, stores changed their operating hours. They had different yes. rules. There were long lines. It just completely and radically changed the experience of popping in and out of shops in that kind of old timey romantic way. And I, I still kind of feel that pinch myself feeling that it feels relatively normal to string together a bunch of small tasks out in town. I'm, I'm like still in the re honeymoon phase of post COVID. Like you running. can, yeah. you can kind of expect that something's going to be open yes. where the, for so long you had no idea. Yeah. Like what would it be open? Are you even allowed to do this thing? <laughs> Am I allowed to do this? Like yes. mail a package? I have no idea. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then the other reason I think I, I genuinely enjoy it is we have so many options for delivery and sort of outsourcing errand running nowadays. Some of those came out of COVID, but a lot of them were around before COVID. I'm thinking like your overnight Amazon Prime delivery or your grocery pickup that you do. So for me, I, I can't speak for everyone. I know rural uh, living situations would be very different. But for me, I'm left with mostly errands that I don't mind doing because there are ways to outsource or have like delivery for things so that I'm not um, I'm not going to Costco anymore. I'll talk about that later. But like I don't have to do errands that I don't really want to for the most part, which is a huge privilege. But it also adds to that romance, because if I'm heading out and running yeah. errands, I, I genuinely 
want to and like to. Um, and then finally, for me, I, I now live someplace where I find it a little more pleasant to run errands. I, I lived a lot of my adult life in, in kind of like sprawling suburban areas, which can be very convenient. But they also it's like big parking lots, big, big box stores. And it just can be a little bit of a project, whereas now I'm like doing the bop into smaller shops. And I really like that. Well, um, I can identify with so much of what you said. I mean, we don't have necessarily quite as many delivery options. I'm thinking that there are errands here that I just have to do, even if I don't like them. Yeah, of course. You know, getting your oil changed or whatever. So far, there's no way for someone to come pick up my car. Well, there probably is if I had tons of money, but (laughs) like, I still have to take it in. Right. Right. Um, but I think for me, it's all about the mindset that I'm in when, or like the time I have available. Mm -hmm. Um, yes. So for a long time, I was setting aside Mondays as a, like my domestic day. And I'm still pretty good about that, but there's been a lot of of other things happening and I've been traveling sometimes on Mondays. So I can tell when that day starts to get eaten up by other stuff that I do not enjoy the errand running because now it's like, oh, I have to squeeze this in between this and that. And I feel stressed. So there's almost like two different kinds of errand running worlds. There's like, um, ugh, I gotta like go do this thing in between this and that. And I have to have it all done by the time the kids are getting off school or whatever. So that feels all stressful. And I do not like that at all. But then there's those like leisurely days full of sort of pleasurable errand running. And I will make very different choices on that kind of a day. I'll go mm-hmm. to different stores. Um, I just enjoy it more. I like linger and talk to people mm-hmm. more. It's just a very different feeling. And if I could set up an ideal world for myself. I would have days where it's like, all I got to do is putter. Like I'll go to tractor supply and pick up some chicken feed. And then Mm -hmm. I'm going to go down to Meijer and do my grocery shopping. And I know it's always going to be that same greeter. I don't know if you have greeters like at your grocery stores there. Um, We have extremely enthusiastic greeters. And it's like the same lady. I see her sometimes twice a day. If it's one of those days. Yeah. It's just like, she really wants to, me to have a good day. Like she really means it. Yeah. Um, and I think she knows who I am. It's like, we, oh, she I'm become, sure she does. Yeah. You know, she's become a pal. So anyway, I would, there'd be like the daily routine or the weekly stuff that you have to do every single week, um, or more than once a week. And then there's the stuff you do like monthly. And then there's the stuff you do quarterly. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I would have a really, um, I guess, pleasurably slow paced rhythm mm-hmm. around those things. Interestingly, the last time I really had that before now was when like Jacob was a baby like that. That felt to me like with one baby and I was I was working, but like I think I was working evenings waitressing or something. I was home during the day with him yeah. and we would just like go to the craft store mm-hmm. and then I paid all my bills in person just because I liked to. Yeah. Like I wanted to go in. I would go into the grocery store and pay my electric and gas bill in person at the grocery store because I just liked it. It was like, it worked for my brain. Uh I liked it better than I liked stamping an envelope. Yeah. Anyways, that felt very pleasurable. Had two kids that went out the door because then it was no fun anymore. And then that, that idea of being able to pleasurably errand run went away for like two decades for me. I mean, it was gone (laughs) for a really long time and now it's back. And so I'm really kind of leaning in, but it's like, I have to remind myself now that I don't have to run, run, run. And like, I actually do have time yeah. to go to the fancy store to pick up cheese. Um, if I want to, or like yeah. enjoy a cup of tea while I'm out, like I have to almost rewire myself to be, to slow down a little bit and not be in that frantic mom mode all the time. I, I agree. And I think there is, you probably got really good at strategically matching up the essential errands you had to do with the phase of life your kids were in. So for example, if you had kids who were really unhappy in the car, you're going to prioritize the shorter drive times. Um, and if you're on a tight budget, you're going to prioritize like the, the most efficient, you know, stretching your dollar at the right store. So it's not that it's not that we don't think about errands when our kids are small and they're with us more, but like your decision tree looks very different. And I think what you're saying or what I'm hearing is that we now in this phase of life get to put ourselves back in that decision tree. And it's not that we're not thinking about our families or our budgets, but like there is, we're re- rediscovering like what we love about running errands. Agreed. Sarah, you know, when someone's trying to sell me something, I can be pretty skeptical. 
Maybe it's my rebel tendencies, but having some healthy doubts has definitely kept me from wasting money on every cool product the algorithm sends my way. You know what's not too good to be true, though? Our sponsor, Ritual, and their clinically backed Essential for Women 18 Plus multivitamin. Yeah, Megan, that's so true. We both love these vitamins because they're made with high quality and traceable key ingredients in clean bioavailable forms. And they're gentle on an empty stomach with a fresh minty essence in every bottle. So you don't have to worry about nausea if you're a bit relaxed about when you take them. I'm also a big fan of Ritual's sustainability standards. They use scientific tools to select lower carbon packaging, prioritize sustainably sourced ingredients and set ambitious climate goals. No more shady business. Ritual's Essential for Women 18 Plus is a multivitamin you can actually trust. Get 20% off your first month for a limited time at ritual.com slash the mom hour. Start Ritual or add Essential for Women 18 Plus to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash the mom hour for 20% off. Megan, it's hard to believe it, but for plan ahead types like me, spring is right around the corner. And that means warmer weather and more time on the go. Today, we're talking about the Vionic Vitals collection from our longtime sponsor, Vionic Shoes. These are the best essential styles for everyday wear to get you ready for the season. There's the Uptown Loafer, a super cute, chunky loafer that comes in 10 different colors and collapses flat for easy packing. And there's also the Chardonnay Heeled Sandal, which I just ordered a pair of in a bright cherry red. I don't wear heels a ton anymore, but when I do, they are always Vionic because they're just so comfortable. Yeah, and I was excited to see that the Willa slip-on flat is part of the Vitals collection because I have those in a bright blue and they are so much fun. Elevate your wardrobe with Vionic Vitals, a meticulously crafted collection with daily wear styles designed for comfort and versatility. And of course, the entire collection features Vionic's exclusive Viomotion technology, which is what makes their shoes so comfortable and supportive. The company actually got their start by revolutionizing medical orthotics. And then, lucky us, they just continued that right into fashion footwear. They even offer a 30-day guarantee so you can wear them, love them, or return them for a full refund within 30 days. And we've got a great deal for you. Use code THEMOMHOUR15 at checkout for 15% off your entire order at vionicshoes.com when you log into your account. That's a one-time use only. Bionic Shoes, wearable well-being for your feet. Okay, Megan, so let's talk errand running strategy, which might make you laugh because maybe you have none, but I am curious, are you someone who thinks ahead about when you'll run an errand, you know, which, which couple stores you'll hit because they're close together? Like, do you think strategically ahead or is it more like, oh shoot, we're out of cat litter. I have to go right now to the store or is it somewhere in between? It's like both actually. And one of the things that can be the most frustrating for me is when I do go through the effort of planning everything out very strategically. So like this store is on the way to that store. So I'm going to hit this one first and then that one, but I don't want to make a left-hand turn coming out of that store. So then I'm going to do the thing that's on the right. So it's like I make a right-hand turn. I mean, like all of those things, right? I can get very in the weeds and very like visionary Mm -hmm. with my planning. And then there'll be something happens and it doesn't work. Like I forget something. Mm -hmm that I needed to have with me, let's just say, to do that thing. Or um, I get a text from a kid saying, oh, hey, we need cat litter. And I've already done that part. And then I get really frustrated. And I guess there's really no way to get around that unless I control literally everything. And I'm trying to let go of controlling literally everything. I I don't want to be the one. I'm not the one scooping the cat litter. So I don't want to be the one paying attention to whether we have any. You know what I mean? Like the and So... So yes, I actually am more strategic than you might think. Um, But then I really, when I do that, when I go through the effort of doing all that mental work, I'm almost like madder about it when it doesn't work out. Yeah. But I otherwise would. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get it. (laughs) Um, I, I think I am also a balance of the two. Often one necessary errand will like, like, let's say I need to go check our, we have a work mailbox for the mom hour. We get our mail here in Santa Barbara and it's at a UPS store. We have a rented mailbox. And let's say I'm expecting something and I need to go there today. I will then use that sort of that starting point as a a, a beginning of a little strategy, like, oh, what else could I do in that area today? Or like what time of day is the parking going to be easiest? And then how might, how might I efficiently use the rest of my time today? So I think there's often like 
um, the spontaneous and the strategic are working hand in hand. Um, but I agree with you. It's when you like, when you try to plan it to the nth degree that sometimes errands are, a, it's a dynamic thing. You don't know like which parking lot's going to be full or which thing's going to be right. closed until tomorrow. And so, yeah, that, that does get frustrating. And I also feel like often when I need it to play out that smoothly, it's because I didn't give myself enough time. And that's usually my mm -hmm. fault. That's, that's me stalling at home. Cause I just don't feel like getting going or I don't want to put a bra on or whatever. Right. <laughs> so I stall and I stall and I stall. And then it's like, Oh, I have 45 minutes to squeeze in an hour and 15 minutes worth of yeah. errands. So everything better go perfectly. And then when it doesn't, you know, I'm like, Oh, now how, what, now what am I going to do? So yeah. I am fortunate that I live literally a three minute drive from a store that has basically anything I would need at any given moment. Um, yeah, like I have really easy shopping really close to me when I was even more in town, I had groceries that I could easily get to, but it wasn't as easy to get some of the other kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. Like if the kids needed a pair of pants right. or an orchestra concert or something, that was more like going to be a half hour ordeal just getting there and back. So, um, there's a little bit of a trade-off. Like I have less variety, but the store that I have will do like check basically all the boxes. That's good. Yeah. I don't have does, that. Yeah. yeah. Which does kind of reduce that. Oh crap feeling. Yeah. You know, what's really hard for me that might be surprising because I'm generally good at time planning, but I have a really hard time. Let's say I have to pick up the kids at three o'clock. I have a really hard time doing one errand before school pickup and knowing what time to leave my house to leave so that I still end up at the end time I need. Does that make sense? Like, like I would rather do that errand in the middle of the day and come back home um, than have to time it perfectly to fit in this exact couple of errands and then end up at the school at the right time or at an yeah. appointment at the right time. Well, because there's always there's um, what's the word I'm looking for? There's Unknowns. variables in yeah. there that you can't really plan. Like you don't know how long the checkout line is going to yeah, be. Yeah, exactly. So, yes, I, but I'll still try to do it. That's yeah. the thing. I think that's where I like where I end up frustrated because I try to plan for all the variables that I can't really plan for and then find myself surprised when something, you know, when I couldn't find the variety of yeah. cat litter that yeah. I needed or whatever. And that took three extra minutes. And then the credit card machine was broken and that took four extra minutes. And now I'm like, okay, well now I'm going to be 10 minutes late picking my kids up. Yeah. Fortunately, yeah. having older kids, like they can deal. Totally. All right. So I am curious if you could run errands at any day or time of the day of the week. Do you have a preference for weekdays over weekends? Does it depend on the errand? Do you like mornings or afternoons? Do you, is there even a season or weather that lends itself better to your perfect errand running? Now we're like painting ideal. So here's the thing. I, it's, it's funny how much I loved answering this question in my mind. <laughs> Cause I, it allowed me to kind of fantasize about like the perfect errand running day. So I really love a good early afternoon weekday or even late morning weekday errand run. So kind of when I've had a little bit of chance at home to get some stuff done. So yeah. maybe I spent from, you know, like seven till 10 puttering in my house or working or whatever. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to take a break from that and I'm going to go run errands. And it's going to be a day when it's not busy out. And I kind of feel like I'm cheating a little bit mm -hmm. because I'm out in the middle of the day and I'll be like, who are all these people? Don't they have jobs to go to? And then I'm like, what about me? <laughs> Don't I have a job yeah. to go to? No, apparently not. Not one that, um, that I have to do at 10 o'clock on a Tuesday. Yeah. Um, and so that is just, it feels decadent in a way. It especially feels decadent in the summer. I will find myself in spring and summer. Mm -hmm. I will find myself doing things like lingering in the garden um, section or going to the hardware store and like looking at hoses, <laughs> like just really random stuff. And because it's warm and like, I mean, you probably don't have to deal with quite as much with the weather fluctuations, but here getting out the door in the winter is just a big ordeal. Like yeah. it, you might have snow to shovel. Um, you might have to wipe your car off. It's going to be cold. So you have to have a coat. Something about summer, just being able to run out the door in yeah. like shorts and flip flops and whatever else that, you know, you've already got on feels really decadent. And, but I do like running errands the rest of the year. I would just say like a, a perfectly medium warm summer day, um, with the windows down and sunglasses on. Yeah. <laughs> just like out 
living my best life at Tractor Supply and Ace Hardware sounds really fun to me. Um, I also don't even mind rain. Like I'll take, I'll take a rainy yeah. day. Yeah. And kind of running to the store, like, you know, with a bag over your head yeah. or something like that is kind of fun. Um, ah, gosh, I just really like running errands, it turns out. And on a weekend, it's not that I don't like it. It's just that uh, it's, there's a different energy about running errands on a weekend. Yes. And that to me feels more project oriented uh-huh. or like I want to get it over with so I can get back to relaxing, like doing the weekend. Mm-hmm. And if it, if it's a weekday, like what else am I going to get back to? Like, you know, just more work. Right. And so get, it feels like an escape. Yeah. That. Yeah. Um, I love, I love how much we have to say about this. So I will agree with you that I love a weekday errand. Um, I do a lot of my errands one at a time, um, because of the way my town is spread out. So I'm thinking about like, if I just had one or two stops, this would be different if I really had like had three hours of errands to do. But right now I'm talking about, I just have one or two stops. I love to do exactly what you said, which is start my morning, do all my morning routine, get the kids off to school, come back and work for like an hour and a half, two hours. And then I, I need, my body needs a break anyway. If I've been sitting at my computer for a couple of hours, I need to get up and it's too early for lunch. So I love like a 1030 um, pop out of the house and run one or two close by errands or maybe one errand if it's a little bit more across town and then come back, have lunch. Then I have more work time. Um, And the same might work after lunch. There's another window in my workday, like 130, two o'clock that makes for a good errand. And like you said, there's often not a lot of people around or the people who are out are in my area, it'd be like retired people or tourists maybe. Um, so I agree that like a off, off the beaten path weekday errand is very satisfying. Um, on the weekends, I don't mind a, an errand, but if I'm going to do it on a Saturday or Sunday, I want to be there when the doors open. I really get a lot of satisfaction out of the, I'm up early anyway. Sometimes I'll get up really early or I wake up that time anyway. And, and I will put together a target order on the app and then for pickup and you can do curbside pickup at my target, but often I'll go in anyway. Cause usually by the time I get there, there's some things I've forgotten anyway. And I love to be at target at like eight o'clock when they, op- I don't know if they open at eight or what time, but really early. There's also something that feels like cheating the system then because people sleep in on the weekends, but I cannot. And so I might as well hit those like those more projecty errands. We also went to the nursery, the garden center, like early a couple weeks ago. And it just feels like, I don't know, we're the doorbusters or whatever. So I do like that. Um, if I'm going to do it on the weekend, I don't love kind of hitting the stores when everyone is hitting the stores on a weekend, like, you know, later in the day on the weekend. I have two more things to say, if that's okay, man, this is just like, who knew we had this much material? Well, I guess we did. That's why we're doing this episode. Um, I have a very specific memory of a moment in time when Clara was still home, possibly Owen was still home. Like the kids were little, yeah, but they, but the oldest kids were old enough to watch them for an mm-hmm. hour or two. And so at that time I loved to run like a three 30 to four 30 errand. Mm. So the big kids would get home from school. I'd sit and talk to them for a few minutes, make them a snack or whatever. And then I would run out and have like an hour. And I was just, that was like the first time I could do that again, yes. that I could get that time. And it felt very decadent and it was still early enough in the afternoon, though, that it wasn't super busy out yet. You know, now I do feel like people's work hours are very different now with so many people working remotely. And I don't feel like the hard end of the day is five o'clock anymore. It feels like it starts bleeding into the threes and fours and people are just done. Yeah, I agree. (laughs) I'm not sure that would work now as well. But then it was like still pretty quiet. You can still go to the store at three thirty, four o'clock and it'd be quiet. And I would there's a, there's a, an immediacy to it. Cause often I was buying things to like serve that night yeah. at dinner. And I really liked that. Another member, like you mentioned getting up early on Saturdays, my kids are, have always been late sleepers mm-hmm. and I have very specific memories about getting up um, earlier than them and then running out to the store and buying something special and knowing Aww. like the store would be quiet. It's not, yeah. There's not gonna be a ton of people in there like eight or nine. And then also they would wake up to whatever, whether it was like chocolate chip bread to make French toast with or whatever yeah. it was. Right. Um, and it just, something felt very like I was having my mom fun and I was out alone at the store on a quiet morning, but then I was doing something kind of momish for the kids too, which always yeah. felt nice. Yeah. yeah. I love it. Um, are there any errands that you 
really dislike or hate, or if you had it your way, you would never do again. And it's a big, it's a big topic. Yeah. Okay. So I don't like, I, you know, I tried to figure out why some errands strike me this way more than others. Um, I don't love getting my, my oil changed. Although I've, I've gotten better about that because I found a place in town that I like. I think with the oil change, it's like it never feels like there's a good time for me to sit in my car and feel stupid, yeah, which is exactly feeling what- stupid. You and I have talked about this before. <laughs> we both have the same like car insecurity. I hate yes. feeling stupid at the oil change yes. place. And I hate that you're captive. Like, you, yeah. it's not even just that you feel stupid, but you feel like trapped. stuck and stupid, stupid and, and trapped. trapped. Yes. <laughs> so um, that has gotten better. And we're going to talk a little more specifics later. And I'll tell you about that. Um, I don't love dropping off my dry cleaning. Again, it's like. There's something about, well, not that we have a ton of dry cleaning, but every now and then I'll take shirts to get pressed or something like that. I love picking up pressed shirts. Like there's something very satisfying about that to me, but it's like, because I'm not used, I think it's because I'm not used to doing the dry cleaning enough that I, again, I feel out of my depth. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. I don't really know why I'm there. I'm like dropping it off and they're giving me these little tickets and I'm stressed because I know I have to hang on to those tickets (laughs) and like, I don't. I don't know if any of my expectations are reasonable. I just don't like it. And fortunately, it's not something I have to do very often. Um, And then, gosh, there's one other one. Oh, you know, I'm getting over this a little bit because of New Mayberry and I'm finding my places to do this stuff. But for a long time, I really didn't like going to. Well, when I was in St. Joe, it would have been the UPS store. That's where I would have done the majority of my um, package shipping. And I felt like there was always things I needed to have that I didn't have. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have the right boxes. I didn't have the right, you know, wrapping. It was always more expensive than I thought it would be. And there was a lady who was really mean there. And I never knew if I was going to get her or not. I felt like I was imposing on her time. Again, it's like standing in line, holding something, feeling dumb is not my favorite thing in the world to do. So I'm not hate is a strong word, but I, I, I don't love those three. Yeah, I get those are those are um, all understandable. Um, I I mentioned this earlier, but when my kids were small, I did a lot of Costco and Target because I lived in big, sprawling suburban areas. And those were kind of fun for the kids. And so I'd have a couple little kids or someone walking next to me in a big cart. And I'm just I have this physical memory of how big those carts are. And you're pushing heavy stuff with kids. I know you didn't do Costco when your kids were little, but Others listening will know what I'm talking about. You would be in the line to get out of the door at Costco where they check your receipt. And I'd have three little kids with me and the person at the door would check your receipt and then they mark it with a Sharpie and the nice ones would draw a smiley face for the kids on the back of the receipt. And I cannot tell you how much my kids like looked forward to whether the person was good. And sometimes it would be like they would add a little hair or like funny eyebrows. So some of them were better at the smiley face Sharpie drawing than others. And uh, there would be one or two who wouldn't do it at all. And literally my kids would cry in the parking lot. And it was like, I guess I explain all this to remind everyone, if your kids are getting bigger, these errands when they're small are like fraught with so many opportunities for someone to cry or be upset. Plus it's physically exhausting. It's physically exhausting. Yes. And yeah. then you get You're home. describing that big, heavy cart. Yes. And I'm just remembering turning those carts and how you have to kind of almost do a wheelie uh-huh. sometimes in the front, like pulled, push down. Oh my gosh. To get it to turn and ugh, no. So no <laughs> all that to say with the ages of my kids now, and also where I live now, having a little bit more, more like specificity in the shops I visit, I really don't enjoy. Well, I don't enjoy Costco at all. I will avoid Costco. I think I've been to Costco once since moving back to Santa Barbara three years ago. We kept our membership and Brian will go twice a year, maybe. Um, That one, I think I'm just, it's dead to me forever. It served its purpose. Um, It was good to us for a while, but that I would just avoid. Target, um, I will do, like I said, I like it. I like an efficient pickup, but it's almost 20, it's over 20 minutes from my house. So it's not convenient. And I don't enjoy it in the way like it was once a thing to do with the kids. Um, so now if I do Target, it's just a really t- literally targeted, targeted. <laughs> approach. Um, so those I do not enjoy anymore, but it's like they served their they served their purpose in my in my season of life. Um, the post office, I'm glad you brought that up because I also the UPS store over the years I've had their franchise owned, I learned. And there are 
some that are better run than others. And I've had some UPS stores where I think the people are so nice and so helpful. And then others where they are not. Um, but I will not go to the post office. I mean, for me to go to the United States Postal Service, it has to be a really specific reason. And I happily give my money to the UPS store, even the ones that are less fun, because the post office to me is just the most odious task. Well, that's like, interesting yeah. because I've actually had, I just think it's so, I think it's so individual because I've had towns where the post office was really nice. Like where oh. the people were really nice. Oh, um, never. Where they were small and not busy. So there wasn't a long line yeah. and you could do most of the same things that you could do at a UPS store. So I'd actually was preferring it, the post office for a while over the UPS store when I was in a different town. Okay. Now the town I'm in, I tried going to the post office one day and like the package that I had needed a little piece of tape and the guy made me buy tape. Yeah. Oh, and I yeah. was like, you're going to make me, it's like, it's like an inch of tape is all it needs. Yeah. And it was just to close up a corner. And he's like, well, you can buy, I was like, I got to buy tape. It just felt not in the spirit of, I don't know. That's always been, or that's something. been my experience with every post office ever. I feel like. Um, it's like a Saturday night live sketch sketch of government workers or something. Like I feel sometimes afraid when I'm in the, that's so office. funny. So now I'm not going there anymore. Now I'm going to go to the other place where they're super nice. So, Oh my gosh. We are welcoming a new sponsor today. Dr. Mom, butt balm. Sarah, this might sound a little weird, but when my kids were babies, I actually really enjoyed changing diapers. It felt like a little timeout to connect. Oh, yeah, Megan, I can totally remember that feeling of just kind of leaning in and enjoying a little moment in your routine. Yeah, but when my babies had diaper rash, it made the whole experience so much less fun for both of us. And back in those days, we didn't have great options for rash cream either. It was usually goopy, heavy and full of dyes and preservatives and other things I didn't really want to put on my baby's butt. Well, the creator of Dr. Mom Butt Balm, who is a mom and also a doctor, had the same experience, Megan, and she did something about it. Dr. Mom Butt Balm is free of dyes, preservatives, and zinc oxide. It's easy to apply, easy to remove, and you don't have to use a lot to protect your baby's skin. I really love the way this balm feels. It's almost like a high-end skin cream. Very nice, no strong scent, and definitely nothing like the diaper rash creams I used to struggle with. Don't let diaper rash come between you and your baby. Shop for Dr. Mom Butt Balm online at Amazon or Walmart today. Sarah, when my kids were little, I was always pretty torn on whether to give them a daily multivitamin. I knew that modern kids' diets have some pretty big nutritional gaps, but I also knew that most children's vitamins are basically candy in disguise. They're filled with sugar. They have all kinds of chemicals and preservatives in them. And I was like, why would I give these to my kids? Luckily, two dads recognized the problem and came up with a solution. Haya, the pediatrician-approved, super-powered, chewable vitamin. Haya fills in the most common gaps in modern children's diets to provide the full-body nourishment our kids need with a yummy taste they love. Formulated with the help of nutritional experts, Haya is pressed with a blend of 12 organic fruits and veggies, then supercharged with 15 essential vitamins and minerals, including vitamin D, B12, C, zinc, folate, and many others to help support immunity, energy, brain function, mood, concentration, teeth, bones, and more. Your first shipment comes with a cute bottle that has fun stickers your kids can use to decorate it too. My kids always loved that. And we've worked out a special deal with Haya for their best-selling children's vitamin. Receive 50% off your first order. To claim this deal, go to HayaHealth.com slash MomHour. This deal is not available on their regular website. Go to H-I-Y-A-H-E-A-L-T-H dot com slash mom hour and get your kids the full body nourishment they need to grow into healthy adults. Okay, so I, I mentioned at the beginning of the show that I think there's something really sweet about the idea of running errands with a friend or experiencing a friend's daily life through the errands that they run. So let's try to do the podcast equivalent of that here, Megan. I have a list of some common errands. And I'm going to throw them out. And I want you to just tell me a little detail or two about where you would do that thing right now in your life. Um, and like you said, you've moved to a different small town. And so uh, things have changed. But if you were to do this errand tomorrow, just tell me, like, take me along for the ride. Where would you go? And what are some details 
around it. So let's start with uh, what we were just talking about, which is to mail a package. So you got to mail a package. Take me along for the ride. Okay. Well, I, before we even get into this, I just want to have a preamble that I'm still figuring my new little town out. Um, there are things that I'm doing back in St. Joe, which is like 15 minutes down the road. It's not super okay. far, but my kids still go to school there. So for a while I was fooling myself that it would be as convenient to keep my errand center there because then I could just lump it onto the right. beginning or the end of a school pickup. But we know how life works, right? All, for all the reasons we've already said today, that doesn't actually always work out. So I'm starting to slowly move my errands down here where I'm only three or four minutes from downtown. Okay. So just saying some of this is still in a hybrid. In flux yeah. And yes, it's a hybrid. Okay. So if I was to um, mail a package, well, <laughs> obviously I'm not going to the post office anymore where the guy wanted to charge me for yeah. tape. Um, there is a little store down the road from here. It's not a UPS store and it's not because I can't make like Amazon returns to it. Okay. And it's not like an official FedEx store. It just does all of it. You can take literally anything there. Yeah. I, have, I, know, I know of these. Yeah. And they'll just give you the prices um, and then you pick. So I will go in with a package or a return. And it's, it's, I mean, probably 90 seconds from my house. Oh my gosh. Two minutes from my house. Could you walk? Are you, are you, you're kind yeah, of on a busy highway, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm on a busy road and plus I'd be carrying packages. Well, that's true. <laughs> so I that's, probably that's wouldn't. That's so romantic though. Do that. <laughs> Little brown paper packages. Um, yeah. No, but. It makes it it's actually kind of turned me into somebody who doesn't mind returns because they make it so easy. Like I'll walk in with my package. I've no sooner set it down than one lady is like looking at, you know, I've got my printed out returns thing or whatever. Mm -hmm. She's entering it in the computer. The other one's taping it up for me. Like no questions asked. Nobody has ever said, do you want to buy this tape? It's like they just assume they're going to do that work for me. Right. And then they're super nice. They're really fast and efficient. And I think it might cost a little more. Like, I think maybe there's some, I don't know. I, I, I feel, bet it does. I, yeah, I, I have, feel like there's a yeah. surcharge. But it, if, if the experience, if it's within your budget and the experience yeah. is pleasant, then to me, that's like you're paying a surcharge that is giving you value in its own way. And I'm only paying surcharges on things that I'm shipping out. So if it's a return with like a, pre, a postage paid thing, I don't pay that. Right. You know, Amazon or whoever pays that. So I've been doing a lot of returns lately because I had a lot of wedding stuff that I bought and then returned because it was like try-ons and stuff. Right. And having that resource, I mean, honestly, I'm not going to say I love mailing packages now, but I am going to say I don't hate it anymore. Yeah, that's a, that's big. Right. Okay. So if I, if you were coming along with me to mail a package, we would also be checking our mom hour mailbox. Cause as I mentioned that we have that at a UPS store. Um, it's about, I'm going to say six minute drive. Um, it's on a little shopping and pretty touristy street in my little village. Um, parking can be, I always forget like in our summer and more touristy months, um, parking on that street can be tricky, but there are parking lots behind that kind of you locals would know about. Um, the one thing about checking the mail at you or mailing a package at UPS is it's a pretty, it's a pretty high traffic high foot traffic area. People are walking up and down the street. There's a lot of restaurants and cafes, which is makes it really fun. It feels nice to go down there. But sometimes I'm like in my work from home, like practically pajama outfit. Mm -hmm. And more than once on this street, um, I have seen someone that I know and keep in mind, listeners, I live in the town I grew up in. So if I am seeing someone I know, it, it might be like a mom from school, but it's just as likely to be like my elementary school teacher or a like an old friend of the family. There's something like I can get real self-conscious about like seeing someone I'm not expecting to see that I know. And it happens pretty frequently in my town. So that's a, just a little sidebar that if I were going to mail a package, I probably would just do a quick like mascara check. It's yeah. like a street. It's a, it's a street that like, it's hard to hide. Like if you, you might right. see people that, you know, um, yeah. And it's a UPS store. It's in a like like in a line with a bunch of shops and restaurants and cafes. One thing I like to do there is they have a really good um, newsstand right outside of all of our local free papers that I like to pick up. So especially if it was a Thursday, um, I would pick up like the the weeklies, the the papers that um, have like what's going on in town. And there's some cool like free magazines and stuff. 
So um, I would mail the package there. I would check our mom out our mailbox and pick up a couple free publications and then hope that I don't run into someone I don't want to see. I love it. <laughs> Sounds like a lovely little go- like outing. Yeah. Okay. So you have to pick up a bottle of wine to take to a gathering. Where are you going to do this? Okay. Well, if this is, if I have enough time, it's like planned in advance and I care about the quality of the wine. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm going to go to my friend's wine shop that is in a market downtown St. Joe. So it's one of those like, you know, markets that got like a indoor farmer's market, mm-hmm. essentially. I know somebody who works at or owns every single shop in there. <laughs> so like, I might also stop at the fancy cheese store and yeah. pick up something to take home. I might go to the tea shop and get a cup of tea and sit at a table and check my email or something. I might pop over to the tap room if it's the right time of day for a beer. Like I, yeah, I, if I could, if, if I had two hours because I'm going to run into people and I'm going to want to chat with everyone and I'm going to want to like browse and stuff, that's where I would go. Um, If it's like last minute and it's just, you know, you're like a Tuesday night girls get together or something, I'm just going to go to Meyer. It's like really close and they've actually got a really decent wine selection. So um, that's probably where I'm going. How about you? Well, so I'm the one who came up with these categories and then I'm looking at this one and it feels like in my real life, what I would have done is add this bottle of wine to a grocery list of what I'm already doing that week. Cause there's a bunch of, I can get a bo- nice bottle of wine at Trader Joe's if I want at the Vons, which is our big box grocery store. But let's for the purpose of hypothetical, let's say I've got to just run out and do this one errand. I would probably go to the little grocery market. That's really close to my house, like three minutes away, four minutes away. Um, that tends to be again, a surcharge on the location of this, uh, grocery store, but it does have a nice wine selection. Um, and it's easy to pop in and out of like it, you can be yeah. in and out of there in two seconds. They're friendly. There's just enough, uh, enough of each kind of wine. Um, and I could also probably pick up like a nice bag to put it in or something like if I, if there was something to go along with it. So that's a, it's a grocery store that we reserve for, we forgot something and really need something, or there's just no time to drive the extra six minutes to the other one. So that's probably where I'd go. I'm glad that you brought up the bag thing, because if I were, I mean, this is where we can really break this down, right? Depending on whether I needed something to put the wine in, I might not choose Meyer. Yeah. Because just two minutes further down the road, (laughs) there's a Walgreens and a smaller market where you can, so the Walgreens, I know exactly where the gift bags are Yep. and their wine selection is fine too. Like it's not good, but it's, you can find something that's halfway decent or there's the nicer, more expensive grocery store where there's a side entrance and I can go in the side entrance. And then like the liquor section is like kind of near that entrance. And I believe that's where the greeting cards and like the wrapping Ah, paper is too. Do it all Not much selection, but that, I mean, then you're getting in and out pretty fast, but at Meyer, if I'm, if I was doing that, the cards and the bags are clear on the other side of the store. Right. Um, however, if I did just go, just grab a bottle of wine and come through at, at Meyer, I can go through the, like the, um, self checkout that you can only go through if you have like less than five items uh-huh. and you can, even if the store is packed, you can get through that super fast. So what I'm realizing as we dig into this is that question I asked about, are you strategic? I think we're moms. We're always strategic, we're all right? Strategic. These are yeah. all the, all of the things we think of, of like, great, I got to get a bottle of wine to go to this gathering. Oh, but I also need a birthday card. So because of that, I'm going to do right. it at CVS or because, because I only have three minutes, I'm going to do it at the more expensive place. So there's, there, there's strategy in all of this. Exactly. Um, okay. So you told me you don't enjoy the dry cleaning and nope. I don't feel that way. Actually, that feels like a really satisfying errand because it's very short and um, I don't know, like it doesn't bother me at all, but tell me about if you do have to take in the dry cleaning, um, where are you going? I would go back to St. Joe. Okay. It would be in a strip mall ah. uh, mm-hmm. on the main drag through town. It would be Never the right one. I would always pick the wrong strip mall. Okay. Because I'm so unfamiliar with going. Oh, like you drive to in the dry wrong cleaner. parking lot? Yeah. It's like, you're, so you're driving down this sort of, it's a very Midwestern business, ex, uh, whatever they call it, not expo. What do they call those? Like the business spur. That's the word I was looking for. Oh, so it's like, I know it's, that word. it's like a county highway 
but it's also like doubles as like the business, like the uptown where like the McDonald's uh-huh. and things like yeah. that are. Um, and there's like three or four little, yeah, like little mini mall, like little strip malls, um, shopping centers. They all look to me identical and they all have things like there's like a shoe, like a cobbler in there somewhere. There's like a, yeah. a like a clock repair person, blah, blah, blah. So kind of old timey. Yes. And they all sort of have an old timey look. And I always choose the wrong one. Oh. Always. And then I'm stuck in this really awkward, tiny parking lot that I'm trying to figure out how to get out of and get back on that main street and then get to the correct one. So right off the bat, I I hate it. Um, I'm just going to leave it there because I feel yeah. like I'm complaining too much about something I do maybe once a year. Okay. So that's what I would be doing, though. Yeah. Oh, no, I, I, but I like, it. I like the details. Um, so, gosh, dry cleaning in our lives. Well, COVID, it like went away completely. Right. But before COVID, Brian was like a traveling. He was, he had so much dry cleaning. Um, and then if you go back a few years before that, when I was working corporately, we both had a lot of dry cleaning. So dry cleaning has almost always been a pretty regular part of our life except for COVID. So, um, it's kind of ramping up again. Brian's traveling a lot more. He's wearing a suit more often. Um, it took us a few tries living back in Santa Barbara or him a few tries. He was doing this errand all on his own when we first moved back because it's his clothes. I don't have anything I'm dry cleaning right now. Um, but as his work has ramped up, I told him just recently, like, let me take this errand back over. I don't mind it because it it was always closed. He would be done with work. And then the dry cleaner closed at five o'clock or something. So it's recently back in my, under my purview. And I would be going to a little shopping center four minutes from my house. There's always a parking spot, literally right in front to the point where like, I'll leave my dog right in the front seat or I'll leave my, I'll leave the car running. It's like that close. Um, pull in, go in. It's a tiny little storefront. It's right next to a sandwich shop that I love. And that has been a sandwich shop that I've loved since I was a kid. So I'm tempted sometimes to combine dry cleaning with getting, it's just like, it's just a deli, but it's a really, really yummy bread and really yummy meats and cheeses. So, but they're like $15 sandwiches. So (laughs) that would be my, my temptation would be if I'm hungry, be like, Oh, I'll just get myself a sandwich. But this all sounds like a much better situation than I thought. Yes. 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 Um, okay. Well you alluded to, I know you are constantly picking up chicken feed and other (laughs) tractor supply. So, um, what about getting something from a hardware store, home improvement store? I would include tractor supply. You might have to tell me, you might have to take me on a few errands for this one. Well, yeah, it really depends what I'm specifically what I'm looking for. So like if it was like tractor supply has stuff you'd need to feed your pets and some like limited garden type stuff. I haven't really, um, I don't think I've actually exploited all of the options fully. At tractor supply. I usually use it to go get my chicken feed. I have not done a lot of other kinds of shopping in there, but it, it seems like it's really more geared towards gardening and farming. Like it's okay. for farmers, like, yeah, right? Farm. Yeah. So, um, when you walk in, there's going to be like a bunch of Carhartt clothes and things like outdoor clothes, like yeah. and not outdoor hiking clothes, like outdoor work clothes yeah. and then various feeds and stuff like that. Tractor supplies mm-hmm. <laughs> as well. Um, if I was looking for something like, like, I don't know, back when I had a pool, if I needed pool chemicals, I would go to Ace Hardware, Mm -hmm. which is those, I believe are also local franchises. Like they've always got, yeah, like a, some name. In fact, they're named, yeah, they're often named not Ace Hardware. It's like your local hardware store, but then powered by Ace or whatever. Yeah. And I've got one here that's about five minutes away and it's just, it's delightful. It's like, I just really like going to an Ace Hardware. It's like everything you need, but mini. Yeah. So you don't, nothing you don't need, um, necessarily. And, um, so there's, that would be like my second stop if it wasn't the kind of thing I could get at tractor supply. And then, I mean, if it's a bigger project, like if I need to buy, I don't know, cabinet poles or, you know, plumbing fixtures or something, probably Lowe's or Home Depot, those kinds of stories. I mean, talk about feeling dumb when you're in a store. Mm -hmm. That's how I feel the entire time. I mean, like a Lowe's or Home Depot, um, when I've been in periods of my life where I've been doing more home renovation type stuff, I've spent a lot more time in them and gotten a little more comfortable in them and actually might enjoy them. But right now I'm in a time of my life where I would just as soon avoid them. Yeah. 
How about you? Yeah, kind of kind of similar. Our Home Depot is at the far other end of town by Target. So it's over 20 minutes. I just wouldn't pop out. I just wouldn't. Basically, I wouldn't. Brian would I'd wait till the weekend. Brian loves a hardware store trip of any kind. So I rarely do this kind of errand. But yeah. if I did need to, we have a small Ace Hardware right in our little village, the the same place with the dry cleaner and the expensive grocery store. So that's where I would go because I probably would need something small. And like you said, they're really nice. Ours is really nice. And then there's another Ace Hardware that's like 10 minutes away that's even a little bit bigger and has actually a really nice garden center. And um, so like you, I would avoid the Home Depot. And it's just in terms of location, it's also just not what's right nearby. So um, yeah, yeah, this turned out to be a, a nice plug for your local Ace Hardware <laughs> store. Check out your local Ace Hardware. <laughs> I'd love to hear if anyone listening owns a local Ace Hardware. Yeah, or if, yeah exactly. Um, okay, last one. Um, you have to do something for your car. And I put oil changed or tire fixed, but you could substitute whatever, like, where where are you headed with your vehicle? Yeah, so just with the tire thing, um, I've had really good luck with discount tire. And I used to be in and out of there kind of a lot. I had a car that always had like slow leaks happening in my uh, tires yeah. constantly. Now it's a little further out of the way and we got a guy. We have a guy down got the guy. road. We got a guy who does most of our car stuff. So, and he, he gives a discount for cash mm, nice. it's really fast. Like if you get it in on a Monday, he's probably going to at least look at it that day. And you're probably going to have it back by like Wednesday, which is just really nice. Like it's just fast. But, um, uh, oil changes. I'm not going to go to that guy every time I get an oil change because mm-hmm. I feel like he's got, he's too busy. He's got yeah. other things happening. So, um, there is a place, I believe it's a Valvoline franchise downtown Stevensville. And there's a mechanic named Clara. Oh, I love, um, I've only ever had women there, which is also unusual. And I feel like awesome. oil change places get kind of a bad rap for talking down to women yep. because they absolutely do. They do. <laughs> um, and I've experienced that, which makes that one of those things like you're sitting in your car feeling dumb. But the couple of times I've been to this place, it's been two different women, an older woman and a younger woman. The younger woman is named Clara. I'm going to say she's 23, 24. And I just get such a kick out of it. I like, I love talking to I her. Love I love reminding her that I have a daughter named Clara. So um, I really like going there. I love that. Well, that's, yeah. that's reason enough. I think sometimes our preference for certain locations and errands comes down to little things like that, which is, it's kind of cool. I mean, that's what, that's what makes a community, right? Yeah. Um, so I do almost all of my car related things at the Toyota dealership because even though, again, back to the surcharge versus convenience, um, I've driven Toyota minivans the last, I don't know, over a decade. And even when they're not on like a warranty plan, I usually opt to pay for the service every 10,000 miles or something, which includes an oil change and like checking, topping off all the fluids, sometimes a tire rotation. And then if there's been something actually wrong with my car, that's likely where I'm headed anyway. I think the older your car gets, the less cost effective and the less of a good idea that tends to be. But I have driven newer cars most of most of my motherhood life. So I actually really like going to the Toyota dealership. I loved it in Orange County, too. Um, They have Wi-Fi and like nice places to sit. And so I will bring a laptop and let someone work on my car for even a couple hours if I'm getting like a full service. And as long as there's Wi-Fi, I find a service dealership. Um, those ones, the Toyota ones, at least very pleasant to be in. And the one in Santa Barbara does not have as nice a seating area. The one in Orange County, Megan, I used to like get stuff done. I don't know if I you remember. remember. You'd be like, guess what? I get like to go co- get my car work done. It today. was like my co-working place. I had yeah. like, it was like a cubicle. There's coffee. There's a bathroom. They just come up and let you know, okay, um, Ms. Powers, like you're, it's going to be another hour. I'm like, great. I'm getting so much done here. Um, the one in Santa Barbara does not have as nice a seating area. It's very small, but it does have Wi-Fi. And actually the people are super duper nice. They're so pleasant. And once I was there for long enough that I walked, um, to the little shopping district where at that end of town and got myself an excellent breakfast burrito. So I do not mind, um, heading into Toyota. I mean, I need, I, I, I would like to know in advance that that's what I need to do. Cause it's a bit of a project, but I don't mind it at all. So the place, the guy that we go to now, his huh? name is Brian. 
Um, definitely we, you would not want to hang out there. It feels very much like a shop. I've never even seen the office, like the way, the way you go in and talk to them, you go in through the shop. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. so you're in with all the cars, but it's right around the corner from the park, the beach that I walk at now pretty yeah. much every day. And right across the street from that is this really fancy market where they have like gourmet, um, coffees and teas and wine and beer. And they've got, um, pizza you could buy by the slice oh, yeah. and baked goods and stuff. Yeah. So man, maybe next time I have a couple hours to kill, I'll yeah. just go drop my car off. See if there's anything wrong with it. I mean, really it's pretty genius to have a car place, like to pick your car place based on what you would not mind walking around for two yeah. hours and doing, because otherwise like the, going back to what you said about being stuck or being captive yeah. and feeling stupid and trapped at, at an oil change place. Um, yeah, worth, worth finding one that you can walk to nice places from. All right, well, let's wrap up the episode just by reflecting on something that can really improve an errand running experience for us. And then something that can really kill the harsh, the vibe, as the kids say, we've already talked about like time of day and season and stuff. But, um, I, for me, if I have a really good podcast to listen to, or like a bunch of Voxer messages from friends saved up that can keep me going through several stops. So I like getting in and out of the car, maybe like a five or 10 minute drive in between. If I'm listening to something good, that will extend my errand running staying power by like 50%. Um, I will even sometimes bring AirPods depending on the errand I'm doing and how much walking that there might be. I will bring AirPods and just keep listening. So it's like a podcast is keeping me company while I run the errand. And then in terms of something that can really take the joy, zap the joy right out for me, it's heat, like a heat, like heat wave, extreme heat. I mean, I, I lived in Arizona for 10 years. I had to run errands in 110 degrees. I mean, I didn't have a choice. That was just the way that I lived, but I no longer am subjected to that all year round or half the year round. Um, but if it does get hot here, something about getting in and out of a car and having the, the air is blowing at you and it's so loud in the car because your car is constantly trying to cool itself down, but then you're parking. So then you've got to start all over. Then you're going in and out of air conditioned right. buildings. It just is like, I think it, it makes me more tired. It's just less enjoyable. So not all inclement weather, like you said, running errands in the rain, you don't mind, but for re being really hot does not make me want to run like a string of errands. I totally get that. But, I mean, even here, it doesn't get as hot as it did in Arizona for sure, but probably also not as hot as it gets in Southern California. But it's just like the hot seat that you sit on, but you yeah. have to wear the shorts because it's hot. But then when you go in the store, you're freezing because you're dressed for summer. And yeah, and I the whole that. like the whole thing of an errand is it's it's relatively short. You can string a bunch of them together to make an afternoon, but. I think that's that's where the heat will just zap you because it's one thing to go somewhere in the heat, get out of your car, and then you're then you're there. But the in and out and in and out is no fun. Well, for me, if I had one thing that can improve besides windows down weather, because this time of year, that just feels so nice um, here, at least <laughs> we haven't had it that long yet. So I'm yeah. still basking in it. I really feel like mindset, though. I mean, mm. if I frame the day as I get to do all these things because I do enjoy doing all those things yeah. rather than I have to squeeze all these things in around all this other stuff that's more important and urgent. Um, if I can remind myself that this is pleasurable and I'm enjoying myself, then I actually do mm -hmm. enjoy myself and yeah. it is pleasurable. And then kind of on the flip side of that, what detracts from it is feeling rushed. And that's either because I just didn't plan my day very well or my, my window's too tight. Yeah. Um, and sometimes there's nothing you can do about that. Sometimes the window is just tight, but often I think there is something I can do about it. I can start sooner. I can shove it off to a different day. Yep. I, I couldn't tell you how many times I've been killing myself to cram errands in on a specific day. And then I think, you know, I could have just waited till tomorrow mm -hmm. and it would have been a lot more pleasant. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, feeling rushed is the biggest detractor for me. Um, do you have any errands that you will be running today after we record? Literally right when we get off, Eric and I are going to go pick up my car from our guy. Oh, from Brian. From Brian, yeah. And uh, I'm picking up the Subaru, which has been there for a few days, getting work done. And then, oh man, I mean, we're recording this a little bit ahead of when it 
it, when it goes live, right? So mm-hmm. I have not yet gotten married yet in podcast land. Yep. And um and I or in podcast land I have by the time you're listening yeah. to this, but in real life not. And so there's a just there's a ton to do. Right so now. many errands. So many tasks. Yes. I didn't think I had any errands today. And then as <laughs> as I was saying that or as I was thinking about it, I have a prescription to pick up my migraine medicine and um, the pharmacy is part of our grocery store chain, but it's like a, it's in a separate building. Um, and I, it's like a neutral errand. I don't love that parking lot and there's nothing really exciting to do like next door to it. So it becomes a little, I put it off. They text me, your prescription is ready. I, I don't, it's not like one where I already have a couple pills already. So I don't like immediately need it, but I do need to pick up the refill um, and I should probably do that today because if I put it off too many days, then they like put it back on the shelf and it's a whole yeah. thing. So yeah. that one is on my list today. And then after I pick up Violet from school, we're going to go get some snacks and lunch packing stuff because she has a field trip tomorrow. So um, throw back to our field trip episode and there's nothing to pack for a field trip lunch because she gets hot lunch normally. So going to go do that after school. All right. Well, this was fun, everyone. You can find us on Instagram or in our private Facebook group and tell us what errands you enjoy or don't enjoy. And then come back on Sunday this weekend. We have a More Than Mom episode all about weddings, not just your wedding, Megan, but weddings. Oh, the whole episode isn't going to be just about my wedding. I mean, oh, it might be. We haven't actually <laughs> recorded it yet. So, But anyway, Who knows? We'll, be, we'll be talking about weddings on Sunday. Um, And so we'll be back in your ears then. Talk to everybody soon. Talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to The Mom Hour. Everything we talked about in today's episode is available at themomhour.com. And hey, while you're there, you can find more than 500 podcast episodes, plus articles, playlists, and resources about motherhood and parenting at every stage. And if you like today's episode, we'd love it if you would take a minute to share the show with another mom in your life. You can also find us on Instagram at The Mom Hour, chatting and interacting with listeners between episodes. Thanks for being here, friends. We'll talk to you soon. The Mom Hour is brought to you by partners like The Essential Calendar. The Essential Calendar makes beautiful, minimalist, poster-sized calendars that show an entire season at a glance so you can see and plan for the big picture. If you're looking ahead to 2024 and have big plans you want to see all in one place, visit theessentialcalendar.com slash themomhour. You'll save 10% off your purchase when you visit that link or use code themomhour at checkout. Again, that's 10% off our favorite seasonal calendars at theessentialcalendar.com slash themomhour. Hey everyone, Sarah here. Megan and I would absolutely love it if you hit pause right now, right where you're listening, and left the Mom Hour a rating and review. If our show has helped you feel a little more confident as a mom or a little less alone, that's one of the absolute biggest ways you can thank us. And it really takes about 30 seconds. If you're listening in Apple Podcasts, just navigate to the Mom Hours show listing. So not the episode you're listening to right now, but the kind of landing area for our show as a whole. And then scroll down to leave a rating or review. Thank you so much.